Hey guys, Gase and Gabe out in the shop today. One of the most common questions we get from the graduates of our online and in-person timber frame class is how do we attach the timber frame to the foundation? So today we're gonna to show you our most typical detail uh, that we use when we're building a timber frame. So what we have here is a pressure treated sill plate. We use a PSL, parallel strand lumber uh, piece that is pressure treated to prevent rot. The sill is sitting on top of our favorite sill seal. This is uh, made by Protecto Wrap. It has a uh, backer on it and sticks to either the top of the foundation or you can pre-install it on your sill plate. What we like about it is that it does stick, so you get a good airtight seal, and it's also very thick. It's about 3 eighths of an inch thick. So if you have an uneven surface on the top of your concrete wall or an uneven sill plate, that 3 eighths of an inch really does take up that gap and prevent air from leaking into the house down here at this vulnerable point. On top of the pressure treated sill plate, we have um, a shoe that the structural insulated panel fits over. And then this is the uh, structure of our typical first floor platform. So we have a, an 11 and 7 8 inch I joist, and this is their uh, uh, rim board that keeps the I joist from buckling three quarter inch Advantech on top of that. And here is our timber frame post. I asked Gabe to pour me a concrete wall. He refused. So I'm having to use this table um, to represent our concrete wall. But just notice that the wall, concrete wall, actually extends out two inches beyond the rim board. So this sill plate is actually supported by two inches of concrete from below. And that leaves the balance of the concrete wall supporting the timber frame and the eye joists that come in and sit on top of the sill plate. As we're building the timber frame, um, we like to leave the posts floating around a little bit. That helps with getting braces in place. Um, and it helps us manipulate the tops of the posts so that the top plates will drop onto the tenons. At some point though, we get committed and we knock the posts into place where they belong on the on top of the first floor platform and we'll just toe screw them so that they don't dance around anymore. Ultimately, we're going to use the SIP to hold the timber frame um, to the first floor platform and to the sill plate. The sill plate is attached to the top of the concrete wall with either a cast in place J-bolt or Simpson's Titan HD, which is a unique screw um, that allows you to drill a hole in the concrete and then you actually drive the screw into the concrete. And they've gotten code approval for a one for one replacement with a half inch J-bolt. So either of those works very nicely. We like to use the Titan HD because it ensures that we get our hold downs exactly where they need to be on the concrete. You'll notice that the two by four is either nailed or screwed into the PSL. And then we also use a proprietary sealant <coughs> that is compatible with the SIP to both bond this shoe down to the sill plate uh, because that is a very important connection against uplift and the uh, sealant also, again, just prevents air from migrating in down here at the base of the house, which is a notoriously leaky section. One of the first things we'll do uh, once the timber frame is up and we're ready to start closing is hang gypsum. So I've got just a piece of half inch uh, gypsum. We'll put these sheets in place either vertically or horizontally, depending on the spacing of the timbers. Obviously, we're trying to cover as many gypsum joints as possible behind the timbers. Um, and we'll just hold them in place using roofing nails. So this is sort of a, an awkward operation at first. You want to put up just as much gypsum um, as you're going to cover with panel. You don't want to leave gypsum just sort of hanging out overnight. So we'll put up maybe one wall of gypsum and then we'll swing in the panels. So you'll notice with this sip, um, the bottom inch and a half of foam is removed. That's so it can sit over the shoe. Pardon me. All right, you do want to make sure that the SIP is all the way down. <clears throat> we will install SIP screws through the SIP into the rim board and into the post. And all of those fasteners hold the post to the rim board, to the sill plate, to the foundation, 
And that's what keeps the building from tipping over when the wind blows and locks those posts into place. Our typical screw spacing is somewhere between 8 and 10 inches through the SIP and into the timber frame and into this rim board. The last thing that I would point out is that we then mechanically fasten the SIP to the 2x4 with just an 8 penny nail. And we will also usually drill through the SIP and blow expanding foam into this void on top of the 2x4 but under the foam. So the 2x4 is attached to the SIP plate um, very frequently, roughly 4 inches on center with either nail or screw. And then we also use a proprietary mastic that bonds the 2x4 to the sill plate. You can see it's squeezing out here. So the gypsum lives behind the sip. The sip is separate from the gypsum. And notice that the foam is held back at the bottom of the sip so that it can fit over the shoe. This is the sill seal that we really like. Um, it has a self-adhesive backing, so it bonds to the sill plate. And it's very thick, 3 eighths of an inch thick. The silk plate that we like to use is this PSL, Parallel Strand Lumber. It is made from small strands cut from the tree. So the imperfections of a typical tree are engineered out of this product because those little strands are glued back together. And they are also individually pressure treated. So you have very good pressure treating that runs all the way through the timber. So here we are on the inside of the building. This shows our post mounted on top of the deck. This is the gypsum that you see in the background. Obviously, we like to have that gypsum completely on the outside of the timber frame. Then the timber can, um, can shrink and then seasonally shrink and expand as the um, relative humidity changes. Um, but we don't have a gypsum edge butted into the side of the post. So the post is free to move without opening up a gap. Um, as I mentioned before, we typically use a 3 quarter inch Advantech sheathing on top of an 11 and 7 eighths inch eye joist. Obviously, very different from the timber frame that's above. What we like about the eye joist is that it gives you the ability to easily run wiring and plumbing down at this level. Timber frames are notoriously difficult to run mechanicals in because there are no cavities. So we like to use uh, the engineered eye joist on the first floor to facilitate running mechanicals and also because it's a dry, stable, very stiff first floor platform. And underneath, you can see the PSL sew plate extending in to pick up the load of the eye joist. And then we also install um, an appropriate vertical blocking underneath each post. So this would need to be sized according to what the weight of the building is. And that just transfers the load of the post down to the sew plate and ultimately down to the concrete wall below. So this is our typical detail. Uh, we like to use it because it employs the strength of the SIP that we're already using to enclose the building. So when it works as the hold down, we like to use it. Um, stay tuned for a few more videos that show you some mechanical hold downs that you might need to use if you don't have a first floor platform um, or a, or a um, concrete wall to attach to. So we'll go through several different um, commercially available metal fasteners that help you attach the timber frame down to whatever your foundation is.